Welcome to Dr. O's Easy Rules for Multiplying with Significant Figures. I'm Dr. O, and in this video, we will take the information we learned from my other video, Dr. O's Three Easy Rules for Determining Significant Figures, and apply that knowledge to problems involving multiplication and division. So, let's get started. There are three rules to remember when determining significant figures when performing multiplication or division. And rule number one is to do all the math first. Even if you have a problem that requires several steps or has multiple functions, you do all of the math and you do that math without any rounding. So rule number one is to do all the math with no other number manipulations. Rule number two states that next you need to determine the significant figures for the values you were given. So the numbers or the values that you were given to perform your calculation, you go back to those values and determine how many significant figures each one of those numbers has. So rule number two requires that after we work our solution, we go back to the given values and determine the significant figures for these numbers. And rule number three says that we round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. So this rule is requiring that whichever of our given values has the least number of significant figures, our solution should reflect that number of significant figures as well. Now, let's look at some examples. Let's say we had a problem like this one, where we're being asked to multiply two numbers and record our answer in the correct number of significant digits. Rule number one says, do all the math first. So let's do that. So we have 3.2 times 1.4, and that equals 4.48. And with that, we're done with rule number one. Now rule number two says, determine the significant figures for the given values. Well, our given values are 3.2 and 1.4, so let's look at those. From my video, Dr. O's Three Easy Rules for Determining Significant Figures, we know that rule number one deals with leading zeros, and we have none. And that rule number two deals with trailing zeros, and we don't have any of those either. Which leaves us with rule number three, all numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count towards our tally of significant figures. So for 3.2, the numbers 3 and 2 count as significant figures, which means that 3.2 has two significant figures. Now, if we look at the other value that we're given, which is 1.4, here, too, we have no leading zeros or trailing zeros, so we don't have to worry about rules number 1 or 2. And just like our first value, we can see that the 1 and the 4 are going to count as significant figures, which means that 1.4 has two significant figures as well. And with that, we're done with rule number 2. Now, rule number three says to round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. And since both of our given values have two significant figures, that will be to two significant figures. But our answer has three significant figures. So that's going to require that we round. And our answer will become 4.5 which like our given values has two significant figures. And with that, we have successfully applied the rules for multiplication with significant figures. Let's say we had a problem like this one, where we're being asked to multiply 1.69 by 2.13 and to record our answer in the correct number of significant digits. Well, rule number one says do all the math first, so let's do that which means we're going to multiply 1.69 by 2.13, and that's going to equal 3.5997. And with that, we're done with rule number one. Rule number two says determine the significant figures for the given values. Well, our given values are 1.69 and 2.13, so let's look at those. So we know that rule number one with regard to determining significant figures deals with leading zeros, and we have none. And that rule number two deals with trailing zeros, and we have none of those, which leaves us with rule number three with regard to significant figures that all numbers that are not leading zeros or trailing zeros count when tallying the significant figures. So for 1.69, all three of these numbers are going to count, which means that 1.69 has three significant figures. Now, if we look at the other value that we're given, which is 2.13, here, too, we have no leading zeros or trailing zeros. And just like our first given value, uh, we have 
the 2, the 1, and the 3 that count towards our significant figures, which means that 213, 2.13, has three significant figures as well. And with that, we're done with rule number 2. Now, rule number three says that we round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. And since both of our given values have three significant figures, that will be three significant figures for our solution. But our answer has five significant figures, so we will have to round, which means our answer becomes 3.60, which like our given values, has three significant figures. So let me ask you, what makes a trailing zero, this zero right here at the end of our solution, count in the tally of significant figures? That would be the presence of a decimal in the number. This is why 3.60 has three significant figures, not just two. And with that, once again, we have successfully applied the rule for multiplication with significant figures. Now, why do we even bother with these rules? Well, it has to do with the idea of how precise our measurements are. So if we take the last example, there's an assumption that the values of 1.69 and 2.13 were obtained through some sort of measurement. And in the chemistry lab or in a, on a building site or in any sort of manufacturing, this would be true. So let's say, for instance, that we had to repair some damage to a ceiling and that the area that we needed to replace measured 1.69 inches by 2.13 inches. Well, these numbers imply that the measuring tape that we used was precise to the 100th position. It's precise to these three figures that we see right here. Now, my measurements aren't 1.7 or 2.2, which would actually be a little bit too big for the hole in our ceiling, but they're precise to these three digits, to the 1,000th position in both, case, both cases. And this makes these three digits significant in our solution. Now, once we multiply our numbers to find the surface area, our product ends up being 3.5 997. And this number is implying that it's precise to the 10,000th, which is far more precise than either one of the measurements that we actually took, which are only precise to the 100th. Now, how can that be? Well, it can't, which is why we must round our calculation to reflect the same level of precision in our given values and why it's important that we understand how to, how to determine significant figures. All right, here we have a problem where there's a difference between the significant digits of our two given values. So let's apply our three rules and see how this goes. So rule number one says to do the math first, so let's do that, which means we have a product of 491.8185, and with that we're done with rule number one. Rule number says to determine the significant figures of the given values. Now I'm going to do this quickly. So our first value has these digits as significant, which means that 1.53 has three significant figures. And for our second value, this has five significant digits, which means it has five significant figures. Now rule number three says to round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. Well, if we take a look at our product, we see that it has seven significant figures, so we will be rounding. Uh, in order to do this, we need to see which of our given values has the lowest significant figures, and that would be 1.53 with three significant figures. So if we're going to round our product, we start counting from the left the digits that we will keep, which means we're going to keep the four the 9, and the 1. And we're going to go one more digit to the right, looking to this digit, to determine whether the last digit we're keeping will get rounded up or stay the same. So the rule for rounding says that if the digit we're dropping is equal to or greater than 5, then the last digit we're keeping gets rounded up. If this digit we're dropping is less than 5, then the last digit we're keeping stays the same. And in this case, the digit we're dropping is 8. And we're going to be dropping everything else as well, that's to the right of 8, but we're looking to the 8 to determine rounding, 
8 is greater than 5, so our last digit that we're keeping gets rounded up, and our final answer is 492, which has three significant digits. Here we have a problem that, on the surface, looks like every chemistry and math student's nightmare. So many zeros, right? Well, this is a good opportunity to see how well we do in determining significant figures of various numbers. So let's see how this goes. So regarding our multiplication, rule number one says do all the math first. So let's do that. And here's our product, 0 0.002912. And with that, we're done with rule number one. Rule number two says determine the significant figures of our given values. For our first value, it has a zero at the end. Will this zero count as a significant figure? Yes, because trailing zeros count when there is a decimal present. So 1.30 has three significant figures. Now our second given value has leading zeros. And the rule here is that leading zeros never count, never ever count when tallying significant figures, which means that the only important numbers are going to be the two twos and the four, and our second value has three significant figures as well. Now, rule number three for multiplying says that we are to round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. Well, if we take a look at our product, we can see that it has four significant figures, because remember, we're not going to worry about those leading zeros. They're not significant. We're only counting significant figures. So because our product has four significant figures, we're very likely going to have to round. So let's see which of our given values has the lowest number of significant figures, and that would actually be either one, because they're both significant to three figures. And we're going to want our product to have three significant figures as well. So in order to round, we're going to start counting from the left, the most left non-zero significant figure, to figure out which of these numbers we're going to keep. So that means we're going to keep the 2, that's our first significant figure. We're going to keep the 9, and we're going to keep the 1. And now we're going to go one more digit to the right, looking to this digit to determine whether the last digit we're keeping will round up or stay the same. So the rule for rounding is, that if the digit we're dropping is equal to or greater than 5, then the last digit we're keeping gets rounded up. If this digit we're dropping is less than 5, the last digit we're keeping stays the same. And in this case, the digit we're dropping is 2, which is less than 5. So our last digit that we're keeping stays the same. And our final answer is 0 0.00291, which has three significant figures. Well, what about dividing numbers? The good news here is that the rules are exactly the same. So let's work a couple of problems with division and see how that goes. So here we have 39.14 divided by 2.14. Rule number one says do the math first. So let's do that. And our quotient equals 16.30833. And with that, we're done with rule number one. Rule number two says determine the significant figures for the given values. Well, our first given value has four significant figures, and our second given value has two significant figures. Alrighty, rule number two is finished. Now rule number three says to round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. Well, our answer has seven significant figures, so we're going to be doing some rounding. So which of our values has the fewest significant figures? Well, that would be 2.14 with two significant figures. So we're going to start counting from the left the digits we'll keep in our quotient. So we will be keeping the 1, and we'll be keeping the 6. And we're going to go one more digit to the right looking at this digit to determine whether the last digit we're keeping will round up or stay the same. So the rule for rounding is that if the digit we're dropping is equal to or greater than 5, then the last digit we're keeping gets rounded up. If this digit we're dropping is less than 5, then the last digit we're keeping stays the same. In this case, the digit we're dropping is 3, which is less than 5, so our last digit we're keeping stays the same. And our final answer is 16 
which has two significant figures. Let's do one more division problem to make sure we have all of this locked in really tightly. Here we have 89.172 divided by 14.23. Rule number one, do all the math first, so let's do that. And our quotient is 6.266479, and with that, we're done with rule number one. And rule number two says, determine the significant figures for the given values. Well, our first given value has five significant figures, and our second given value has four significant figures. And rule number two is finished. Now rule number three says to round our answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. Well, our answer comes in with seven significant figures, so we're going to be doing some rounding. So which of our given values has the fewest significant figures? It would be 14.23 with four significant figures. So we want our answer to also have four significant figures too. So to determine which numbers we're going to keep, we start counting from the left, starting with a significant figure. So we're going to be counting the six, and we're going to take a look at the two, and we're going to keep this six and the second six as well. And we're going to go one more digit to the right, looking to this number to determine whether the last digit we're keeping gets rounded up or stays the same. The rule for rounding is that if the digit we're dropping is equal to or greater than 5, then the last digit we're keeping gets rounded up. If the digit we're dropping is less than 5, then the last digit we're keeping stays the same. In this case, the digit we're dropping is 4, so our last digit, the one we're keeping, stays the same. And our final answer is 6.266, which has four significant figures. Let's do a recap and see what we did in this video and revisit the rules one more time. So when multiplying or dividing with significant figures, the first thing you do is all the math. The second thing you do is determine the significant figures for the given values. And in this step, it really helps if you know those three easy rules for determining significant figures of numbers, because you never know when those pesky zeros are going to show up. And rule number three says to round your answer to the same number of significant figures as the given number with the fewest significant figures. So in this step, you're going to have to go back and see which of your given values has the fewest significant figures, and you're going to round your answer to have the same number of significant figures as well. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do me a favor. Comment, like, and subscribe. And do really well on your next exam. Thanks for watching.